What's going on guys? Bruce here, 843 Fishing. We are finally gonna go over the Ascend 12T. This is all gonna be part of that review video that I keep telling you about. I am gonna add some bits and pieces from all the videos I've been doing. I'm gonna splice them together and we're gonna make a complete review. But what I wanna do today is I wanna go over some of the standard features of the kayak and some of the upgrades that I have done to it. As far as upgrades go, I haven't done much, but I'll go over what I have done in this video right after this. Let's go through some of the basic features that come equipped on the Ascend 12T. We'll start at the front of the boat and we'll work our way to the back. Then we'll go over some of the modifications that I've made to the kayak to this point. Starting at the very front of the boat here, we have the carry handle. I do believe that this kayak, fully empty, completely empty, nothing in it, but what comes with the kayak is about 77 pounds dry. Um, these handles are actually pretty sturdy. I'm pretty impressed with how well they have held up so far. They have one at the front of the boat and one at the back of the boat. I'll show you when we get up there. We have up front here, we have a bungee storage for dry bag, extra tackle, whatever it may be. Tuck it up underneath there. A lot of times I'll stick my flip-flops in there or whatever I'm wearing for water shoes that day to hold them down. As we move to the main part of the boat, there is a no-slip decking here because of the fact that this kayak is intended for standing use. Inside the hull hatch here, which is pretty decent size, you can reach in probably about eight inches that way eight inches that way whole thing is probably about 30 inches wide total width of the kayak is about 32 inches so I'm thinking it's about 30 inches wide on the inside there uh, maybe a little less 28 inches maybe and you're talking about a foot wide with the foam the foam insert that runs here that supports your weight here and then there's also a foam insert here that supports your weight here the hatch is really nice. I like to slide some tackle trays in there, extra sunscreen, extra rags, um, extra set of pliers, whatever it may be that I'm carrying with me. I like to slide down there and everything usually fits inside the hull of the kayak itself. It's got this little latch here that locks it in place. Flip it up, turn it, it opens. There is a rubber gasket that goes all the way around, though some water from the screw holes and everything else does seep down in here. It is not 100% waterproof, but a good spot to keep things dry if you want to keep them out of the way. The adjustable foot pegs. One of the things that we liked about the kayak the most was the adjustable foot pegs. On some of the Perception kayaks and so forth, they have um, the little gator bite looking teeth on the side that are very uncomfortable on your feet. The ones that we rented had those type of um, foot pegs and uh, we, we, were, we were not too fond of them whatsoever. Here we have a true dry storage. Now this cap, if you put this cap on too tight, it does like the stick or if you cross thread it, it, it's hard to get off. Now this one comes off pretty easy because I leave it fairly loose. I'm thinking it's, it's enough to pr pressure on the uh, rubber seal in here to keep everything dry, um, which is a plus. 
It also did come with a screw that was attached to the bag itself. If I can pull it out here. The bag itself had a little lanyard attached to it. That lanyard was hooked to the cap, but when you twisted it, it twisted the lanyard up and it made it tough to get this thing out. So what I done is I cut it off and I broke the screw out of the, the cap. So now we just have the bag and the cap. Kind of dangerous with this cap being the fact that like, if you do take it out and a gust of wind will take it, takes it overboard, you know? Um, but what we keep in this dry bag, because we learned our lesson the first time, is the connect scale. Connect scale two to be exact. So we keep the connect scale two in there to keep it dry. Slide right back down into the hole. It doesn't fit much, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it doesn't even like to fit the connect scale in there. But if you're putting pressure on this thing and you actually cross thread or strip the threads out, it is brutally tough to get it back off. So like what I tell Sherry is when you're putting it on and you do have to push it down on something, spin it the opposite way first to let it catch the grooves, then turn it so it seals. But that compartment is truly waterproof. I have not had any water get in there unless I left the cover off, which sometimes I do. Um, so that way I can reach the connect scale, my pliers, or um, sometimes I stuff my lip grippers down in there as well. For the most part, I keep them attached to the seat. Uh, your scupper holes start here at the hull storage and the dry storage. There are a total of six scupper holes in the whole kayak, which comes with scupper plugs as well. Just behind the dry storage, there is a cup holder here. Um, you can use it as a cup holder, or I have found that a cup of chicken livers or one of those cups of shrimp that you can buy at Walmart, the bait shrimp in the um, tackle section, um, fits down in it perfectly, as well as a cup of worms. Um, when you go buy the little container of worms, that container fits in there perfectly for you to be able to reach your bait, hook up, and cast out. Um, right now, I have a couple of these um, cleats in there. I bought these cleats. They are not rail mounted cleats. They are actually um, screw mount, which I don't want to do a lot of screwing into my kayak. But I opened this package because when I saw this part right here at Bass Pro Shops, I thought that it might fit in this rail. And in fact, I took it out of the package there and tried it on one of the 12 tees they had on Showcase. And they fit right in the track perfectly. So I was using this for my anchor line to tie my anchor line to. But I do have a anchor trolley coming pretty soon. And we're gonna go ahead and put that on in a different video. There are two rails. There's this rail here, and there's a rail on the other side. And it works with most systems like Rail Blaza, Yak Attack, Yak Gear. All those systems work pretty good. I have found some YouTube videos where people say that the bolts that go into a toilet flange up through the toilet and you tighten your toilet down to the floor, those bolts will work in this tracking system so you can make your own homemade stuff. Um, there's two paddle holders that fold down, which is nice, so you don't keep banging into them when you're paddling. They do feel a little flimsy, but they've held up thus far, and I am pretty happy about that situation. They work pretty good. I haven't had any problems. Snaps in, snaps out. I do wanna get a paddle leash. If you've watched any of my videos here of recent with me paddling in the yak, I do not have a leash for the paddle yet, and I do intend on getting one. Slide this joker out of the way. My lip grippers attached to my seat. They stay on there pretty good. Keep yourself tethered. I do want to get a float for the end just in case they ever do fall out. The seat is upgraded. It could be a little bit more comfortable, but I do like the fact that I can sit up straight and paddle at the same time. I do like the fact if Sherry and I find a beach somewhere and we want to sit down for lunch um, and get out of the kayak, we can pull the seat out and use the seat on the beach somewhere. It just has a little track system here and here, similar to this rail system here, 
that it slides into and you can adjust at what you sit. Usually I sit in the very first one there. Moving towards the back of the kayak, once you've adjusted your seat to where you like it, there's usually a little bit of storage right back here behind the seat. That storage is where I keep my life jacket. My life jacket and my whistle are connected at all times because of South Carolina regulation that you have to have a PFD and a whistle with you while you are on the water. Kayak comes equipped with two rod holders, one on either side, and they come with uh, little rod leash clips, which I found to be a bonus feature. They do come as a standard package, but I found that it was a bonus feature because these little clips sure do come in handy if you've watched any of my videos. Just behind that, there's just an open area here with two D rings on this side, two D rings on this side with my scupper plugs zip tied to it. I always keep my scupper plugs with me just in case, though in the summertime I have no intentions on using them. I probably will use them more like in the wintertime when I'm out there fishing for black drum and speckled trout. So there are six scupper plugs, like I said. There's two here at the back, two under the seat, and two that start at the dry storage and hull hatch area. I want to put a crate and I want to do a video of me building a crate for my yak that I can bungee back here at these D-rings with a couple extra rod holders on it and a place for me to put my tackle with a lid and so on. At the very back of the boat there is another bungee area where I usually keep um, either my flip flops or whatever I do not want to put down in the hull. I really don't carry anything back here yet because I try to um, manipulate the kayak with the weight the best I can. But the bungee systems, I do like having those very much. Not a lot of kayaks come equipped with the bungee systems on them. So with this kayak, you get a lot of features, I believe, for just a paddling kayak for the price. At the very, very back of the boat, we have another handle that runs opposite of the front handle. The front handle runs like this, back handle runs like this. Um, handle is just as good as the front handle. Like I said, kayak's about 77 pounds empty. Sherry and I have moved it fully loaded and you're talking about 100 pounds worth of uh, weight on this handle at one time. The drain plug, there's a drain plug here at the back of the boat. So, like I said, the hull storage is not completely waterproof and at, from time to time you do get water in here and this just allows you to drain the water out of the hull. So we have that and that's pretty much all the features of the kayak and everything that comes equipped with the kayak. So this is a Sen 12T model like I said. And one of the reasons I decided to go with this kayak is because of the modifications that you can do to it or the simplicity of or ease of doing modifications to this kayak as far as putting trolling motors on putting rudders on um, it's fantastic i haven't made many modifications yet and that's where we're going with this uh, chapter of the story right now is the modifications i have made like i said i haven't made any modifications all i have done is taken some paracord and some carabiners and made some rod leashes. Um, when I first started, my rod leash was probably yay big. Just enough for me to pull it out of the rod holder and disconnect it and fish with the rod. In the last few videos, you'll know why I extended the length of the rod leashes. Now the rod leashes, the net leash, whatever may be leashed to this tether can go anywhere on the boat as far as me sitting down without having to unclip it. So I do like that these little rod leash clips um, came equipped on the boat. Now I have got on Amazon and looked at some that coil up when you're not using it. You stretch it out and then it coils back up. If anybody has an opinion on those, drop that opinion in the um, comment section below because I, I do feel like over time that they're just gonna stretch out and they're never gonna coil back up. So I don't know if the paracord is the way to go, but as you can see, I've got paracord everywhere and um, it's actually actually kind of a pain especially once I put that crate back here it's gonna get all tangled up and everything else so there's that 
let me go ahead and show you guys how it hooks up to the rod and the net itself. I've got the rod and the net hooked up in the kayak as I would if I were out fishing. Basically, with the net, all I did, and the same thing on the fishing rod, is I took a zip tie, wrapped it around, fed another zip tie through, and made a loop out of it and pulled it tight. It doesn't slip or anything like that, so now I have something to tether to. Slide that back in there. And like I said, when I'm on a kayak, these leashes are now, or tethers, are now enough to be able to come up front with it, scoop the fish, do what I gotta do. Same thing on the rod. Rod's the same exact way. You can see where I got it tethered. Though, don't mind my pink rod, man, my purple rod. This is Kaylee's rod, and it's a fish catching machine, okay? So don't be knocking it. Um, have the zip ties on there making a loop like that I actually want to see about maybe bringing it somewhere up here out of the way to hands because right now I've got this going on like this which isn't terrible it's not too bad I don't mind it but I think if it were up here it would be out of the way my you know um, what I'm afraid of is that maybe the loop will come around and then next thing you know the line smacking off the loop and it's no good a lot of people say just go with rod floats but with rod floats you can still lose the rod you know it takes a dip into the uh, into the salt water next thing you know the salt water gets into the reel you got to get it cleaned out right away because if you don't get it cleaned out right away it's gonna corrode then you just lost the reel anyway so I do like the tether period So those are the two modifications that I've made back here. Up front, it's basically a filming modification for right now. So up front here at the foot pegs, we have a bungee. My foot pegs are set where I want them to be. And this bungee is connected via zip tie. The zip tie runs in and up through the back and zip ties in the front. The bungee hooks to it here like so i have a bungee up here why do i have a bungee like i said filming purposes only and it's only a, a temporary solution so that way i can film while i'm out on the water temporary filming solution i've got my tripod here i was using no tether or anything for the tripod the weight of the camera or the phone on top with the microphone held it in place pretty good while i was paddling um, i did get a little shake out of the camera from time to time um, but Sherry and I took a fun day out in Cherry Grove a couple weeks back and I did lose the tripod over the side um, When I lost the tripod over the side my camera went in or my phone went in and the microphone Attached to it. So I wasn't really worried about the phone itself because it was in a life proof case, which is waterproof However, I was worried about the microphone So Brucey pulled out his old bag of tricks and that being a ziploc bag with some rice And uh, we are using that microphone right now and it is working perfectly fine. So that says a lot for the Comica um, smartphone Shotgun microphone so um, What I do is I put the tripod here at the base of my feet I run the bungee through and I hook to the zip tie on the other side. It's out of the way of my feet, out of the way of the hatch. I can get in and out, get everything I need in and out of the hatch here. Um, and I can film. It's far enough away to where I can be in the shot the way I want to be in the shot. Or if I want to turn it around and show you guys what we're looking at, I can hit the button and the phone turns around and now you guys are viewing what I'm paddling in front of or paddling to. So um, that's my temporary feature. My ideal fishing setup is to have the 26 inch arm that comes out here that holds a GoPro as well as a 26 inch arm that comes up here over my head. So I could be looking at you guys here and you guys can be seeing what I'm doing when I'm fishing. I can clip between the two and put together a better video. My only concern about using GoPros or Faux Pros is the audio situation. Um, I do believe that they have microphones for the GoPros or Faux Pros. I'm probably gonna lean towards a Faux Pro being I could buy four of them for the price of one. 
and I do believe they have microphone setups for them as a lot of YouTubers and a lot of YouTube fishing guys and girls uh, use them with a lapel mic. So the fact that it's not completely waterproof is what makes me a little bit of afraid, but I did see some modifications and some um, GoPro microphone modification videos on YouTube that I'll be checking out to waterproof that situation. But like I said as well, I'm leaning towards the faux pro. So if we do lose one, it's only 30 bucks, not a thousand dollar phone or not a $70 microphone. At the beginning of the video, you guys saw me unloading the kayak. Let me show you what I use to haul the kayak or kayaks because I do have two of these Ascend 12T kayaks. Um, Sherry has one in the titanium version or color and mine is the Desert Storm. So we do haul both of the kayaks right in the back of my short bed forward. Um, and I do have this bed extender here to help support the kayaks while they stick out the back. Um, the first kayak, when I put it in, slides right up underneath the toolbox perfectly. Nice, tight, snug fit. The only thing that rubs is the top of the handle. The drain plug here stays protected because the handle is so high. Um, then what I do is I strap it in the back of the truck and then strap across the back of the bed extender. The bed extender itself slides into my trailer hitch and it locks in there and you can't adjust it this way but you can adjust the height up and down to what you need and you can adjust the sides out to what you need. So let's go ahead and load it up and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now usually when I'm tucking this thing in to the back of the truck and underneath the toolbox, I like to lift the front end up just a little bit, slide it in like so, find my little center, and we are in. I then attach my sides with these little clips that come equipped with the bed extender. I only use the first one, but as you see, you can extend out that far. So if both of your kayaks fit in the back of your truck like in a V, this thing will work perfect for you. I only use the first one right now because it fits the width of my kayak perfectly fine. Go ahead and lock that in there. Lock this side in here. Boom. Now it's just a matter of strapping it down. I use ratchet ties. And what I've done is I designated a couple of my ratchet ties to the exact length I needed. And what I did is I cut the end off and tied a knot in it so it stops falling out. Give it a couple cranks just to put a little pressure on it. I don't want to fold the sides in. On this next one, it ratchets in the back of the truck. But what I like to do is I like to catch the seat so the seat doesn't blow out of the kayak. The way this ratchet falls on my kayak, I have to use a rag underneath it to keep it from scratching up the top of the kayak. Once again, just enough pressure to keep it from moving around, and that's that. And as a safety precaution, I did make a modification of putting a carabiner up here to the front handle that I attached my little red flag to. So nobody rear ends me and cracks up my dreams. That pretty much wraps up the walkthrough of the kayak, what comes standard on the kayak, and what I've done for modifications thus far which is not major, like I said. Um, some of the major mo modifications are to come and I'm gonna do separate videos on those. Um, as far as the review on the kayak, 
we did our research when we were looking for kayaks. First of all, let me start with Sherry and I were interested in getting some kayaks. Sherry's never kayaked before. She was interested in it. She wanted to see how she would like it before we invested five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars in a kayak. We went out to Waccamaw Outfitters in Conway, South Carolina on the Waccamaw River and we rented kayaks for the day. We went out, we started paddling around. Immediately, Sherry fell in love with it. Um, our trip, if you watch that video, it's um, kayaking on a Waccamaw River. That's the video. I believe that's the name of the video. I've got so many videos out there right now, I can't remember them all. But I believe that's what it's called. And that video, our trip got cut short due to a thunderstorm. Had our trip not got cut short, we would have been out there for the full eight hours that we rented the kayak. Sherry loved it that much. So, we did that video, we rented those kayaks, Sherry found out what she liked and what she didn't like about the kayak that she had rented. She made a list of what she wanted, we did a little bit of research, we did a little bit of looking around, we joined a few um, Facebook groups like Ascend Kayak Owners, and you know kayak bass fishing and stuff like that just to see what people are doing and to ask some questions well we come across the ascend 12 t's and everybody told me or all the questions i asked they said that the 12 t was perfect for doing all the modifications that you wanted to do to the kayak and after following it for a couple months and seeing what everybody did do we were kind of intrigued we looked at the price of them, we went to Bass Pro Shops, we looked at it, we touched it, we felt it, we put our hands on it. We were originally going to go with the 10 tees because Bass Pro Shops was having a sale on them. Well, after doing some more research, we found out that the 10 tees were a little more unstable than the 12 tees are. And we decided to go with the 12 tees because of the layout of the 12 tee that was different than the 10 tee and the stability purposes. Um, we are very super happy with our purchase. Very super happy is the way to be. If you're not very super happy about something, then you need to speak up. So the only flaw that I can find in this kayak over the couple months that I have owned it and the eight times that I've taken it out is the tracking in current. The tracking on the kayak when in current, going against the current is not a problem going with the current is where the problem lies. When you're going with the current, the tail end or the stern of the boat wants to kick out from underneath you, spinning you in a circle and having to right yourself and get back at it. So Sherry and I did a little bit of research. We asked around on the internet. We saw some rudder packages for like 60 bucks and we plan on doing that modification to the kayak in the future just to help with uh, current situations or the tides in and out of Merle's Inlet, Cherry Grove, Polly's Island, even the tidal Waccamaw River and Intracoastal Waterway. So um, that modification will come. And like I said earlier in the video, all these modifications that I'm going to do to the kayak after this here review are going to be separate videos. So look for those videos coming soon because I have an anchor trolley on the way and I have a Yak Attack Omega Pro rod holder coming as well. So we're gonna do separate videos for each of those uh, modifications to the Yak. But the only thing that I could find with this kayak is the tracking alone. The plastic, from what I understand, is a little softer than some other kayaks. I want to get um, something to protect the keel underneath so that it doesn't get all scratched up from the oyster beds or the concrete or the sand. Um, and the drain plug, super easy to pop out. Those are the only three things that I can find about this kayak that I do not like about it. And they're not major problems. Tracking can be fixed with the rudder. The scratching on the bottom of the kayak can be fixed with um, some Gator Guards keel protector. And the drain plug, you can buy those drain plugs by the dozens for 20 bucks so not a big deal if i don't hit the stump in the water first that's one thing that i did learn with the kayaks over the past couple weeks is really how to get it to maneuver i think that was the biggest issue was trying to maneuver it around stuff where i was getting caught in trees i was crashing into like 
sandbars and stuff in Polly's Island. This weekend we went to Cherry Grove and I was going to shoot a video out there but it was just so brutally hot that I I couldn't even I couldn't I couldn't even crashing the lily pads here. Come on, Anchor. Come on, baby. Yeah, it's just a few things that i am been working on here with the kayak. Learning how to maneuver it. Getting everything figured out. The tethers on the fishing pole. Um, tethered on the net. I got the same type of tether on the net. So we're good there. And the net can move anywhere I need it to move. So we won't lose the net. Even though the net floats. We won't lose the rod. I did tether the camera down. With uh, bungee cords. So I went and made a few of those adjustments. And I might do a like modification video to show you those type of things. Sling the paddle over here and do some casting on these lily pads that we're at now. But going back, which I got distracted from, the doing the kayak review and the connect scale review, uh, the kayak, the one of the downfalls to the kayak is the tracking on it sucks. When I'm in a slow moving current like I am right now, the rear of the kayak or what is it, the bow and then the stern. And then you got port and starboard. Um, the bow of the kayak likes to kick out from underneath you. So we got on Ascend Kayak Owners on Facebook, the group, and we asked if anybody's put a rudder system on their kayaks. And a lot of people followed that post, but no one actually answered it. So we looked at a few ourselves it's 60 bucks it's not terrible and we're thinking about doing it but i just want to know how they work dang with the shallow water that was a bad casper see Hit. Got a hit. Got a good hit. Alright, I'm going to turn you guys around. So the tracking sucks. We're looking at rudder systems. And we might be putting them on there soon. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put that in the review video. As I go through the whole kayak and show you what comes equipped on it and everything else. And I will talk about those things. So. <laughs> Bruce is trying to stand up. We've heard that these kayaks are good for standing. Not yet, not yet. He's not ready. <laughs> He's not quite ready for it yet. <laughs> I had to record it because I was thinking that he might fall in and it would have been fantastic. I'm excited about how stable these kayaks are. Um Two thumbs up on the Ascend 12T. I love it. Um, it was one of our best fishing purchases to date, and I don't regret it at all. And like I said, in my review videos, I'm always gonna be truthful. I was truthful with the Connect Scale. I'm being completely truthful with the Ascend 12T. We paid $599.99 um, each for the kayaks, and if you happen to buy a 712T kayaks and you're going to spend that much money, my tip to you is join the Bass Pro Shops Rewards Program. Get the card, and when you check out, swipe the card or have them scan the card, buy your kayaks. You automatically get like 20 bucks back when you buy the kayaks. You can't use it at the time of purchase, but what I did is I went back and I bought the paddles and the life jackets and everything else. I used that $20 and I got another $7 back on the card for 
I don't know, maybe a lure in the future, maybe some braid, who knows, you know? But the rewards program is awesome. Definitely do that if you plan on purchasing these kayaks or the gear to go with them. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here. That's the end of my review. I can't think of anything else that I need to point out at the moment. If I do come across something else, I will put it in those videos that are to come of me installing the anchor trolley or me installing the Yak Attack Omega Pro rod holder. I will put a link in the description below to the Ascend 12T kayak. Um, you can get them at Bass Pro Shops, Academy Sports, and Cabela's. So I'll put a link to all three uh, websites in the description below. I'm also going to put links to our social media pages, Instagram and Facebook. Follow us there for daily content. Here for weekly content. Be sure to subscribe. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like it, be sure to subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching this far. I really do enjoy putting this type of stuff together for you guys. And I look forward to making the next video. See you then.